This is KGW News at Sunrise. Coming up this morning at 5, a deadly collision in Taiwan overnight. A truck smashed into a train and partially derailed it. We've got the latest this morning. Plus. But I hope we all can remember that the people behind the counter, that we just have the roughest year of our life. Yeah, we're also checking in with a couple of the local restaurants that we profiled a year ago at this time when everything first shut down because of COVID. We're going to find out where things stand for them now after 12 trying months. And Oregon teams may be out of the NCAA tournament, but the state's still well represented. We're going to meet some of the Oregon athletes on the national stage in the final four. It is Friday, April 2nd, uh, a good Friday for many, a great Friday for Brenda Braxton because she has the day off. <laughs> so uh, in. Nina and I are going to try to handle the work of three people this morning. Rod, all you have to do is you. I could have swore Brenda was in our morning meeting. I guess I was just imagining her presence. Yes, <laughs> yes, the dream of Brenda continued into your workplace. <laughs> Here we go. We have uh, dry weather continuing today. You'll notice it's not going to be as warm. Yesterday we hit 68. Right now we're 43 in town. Some of you are in the 30s, but everybody's above freezing. We'll be 53 at noon and I have us hitting 63, which would still be really nice this afternoon. Yeah, sounds great. All right, Rod, we'll see you in a few. Thanks. Well, this time last year, of course, many restaurants were wondering how they would make it through the next few weeks of shutdowns. And what we wound up, though, was more than a year of COVID restrictions. So with that in mind, Nina, we checked in with two of the first places we profiled when the pandemic first began a year ago to see how they're doing now. Catherine Cook reports. I think it has been an absolutely crazy year. Um, no one will argue with Joel Stenberg. We first met Joel in March 2020. He just closed his business, Greenbridge Coffee, in the Lloyd District. He has yet to reopen. We know we're first floor of an office building, so we've got to wait for the people to come back before we have customers again. And then there's Ryan Sari, volunteer board director for the Oregon Public House in Northeast Portland. The nonprofit brew pub had also just closed when we first talked. I mean, a year ago, I thought two weeks boy, I don't know how we're going to make it, <laughs> you know, <laughs> well, I've had 52, 53, 54 weeks now. Oregon Public House reopened last summer, but closed again after the holidays. Ryan hopes once his PPP loan is secured, they can reopen again in a few weeks. All of this has been just a balance of not just the business side, but also the risk side. How much do we want to put anybody, not just our staff, but customers and people encouraging people to come together. Ryan and Joel were the first people connected to restaurants that I interviewed after the pandemic took hold. Their situations are important reminders that so many restaurants remain closed for a lot of different reasons. We're at the spot of the one year feeling optimistic for what's to come, but still knowing there's a lot of work to do. Like the Oregon Public House, Greenbridge Coffee donates a percentage from each sale to local nonprofits. So in that sense, Joel was thrilled when that love came back to him. Last April, he was hired to brew and deliver coffee twice a day to temporary homeless shelters in Multnomah County. He's also working on a new coffee subscription program to drum up business by mail. But he can't wait for the day he can serve customers again face to face call us weird, but we love the interaction with people. But I hope we all can remember that the people behind the counter, that we just had the roughest year of our life. At the Oregon Public House, Ryan Sari hopes to be serving customers indoors by May. And this spring, the unknown is something he's looking forward to. This rebirth of people going out, being together, um, having great food, uh, celebrating, dancing, uh, I, I'm ready for that next season, and uh, and we're close. I think we're close. Catherine Cook, KGW News. Yeah, good luck to them and all the restaurants out there. Well, an Oregon lawmaker is among those pushing the White House to lift the patents on COVID vaccines and make them much more accessible for people around the world. So Congressman Earl Blumenauer says lifting those patents would free up more companies to cheaply and quickly produce those vaccines in poorer countries and save lives now. Something that every American needs to think about. We've done this in the past with AIDS. We're going to have another pandemic. This is not going to be the last global health challenge we have. 
Mercy Corps in Portland says teams have traveled the world sharing sanitation and protective equipment as they wait for a long term solution in the vaccine world. But even with the U.S. donating four billion dollars to international vaccine aid, some of the poorest countries may not see widespread vaccinations until at least 2023. Let's get to three more things to know about COVID this morning. Number one, a California drug company says even after people are fully vaccinated, they're still going to eventually need a booster shot. Gritstone Oncology is creating a second generation COVID vaccine that would serve as a booster to protect people from potential future variants. A phase one trial is already underway and the company anticipates that this booster shot will be ready for FDA approval sometime next year. Number two, a major milestone for CBS. The pharmacy chain says it's already given out more than 10 million shots, and it also says its stores can handle up to 25 million shots a month. Right now, CBS is providing vaccines in almost 2,000 locations in 44 states, as well as Washington, D.C. and Puerto Rico. And number three, a robot armed with virus-killing ultraviolet light is being tested on Swiss airplanes in hopes of restoring passenger confidence. The early reports say a single one of these robots can actually disinfect a single aisled airplane in just 13 minutes. And those are three things to know about COVID this morning. Well, it's been a big week for schools in Portland. Many younger students went back to class for in-person learning yesterday. It's the first time since the pandemic began. Some parents are excited about the opportunity for in-person interaction. Uh, today, Kai went back for his first in-person day of kindergarten learning, and it was great. Um, he said he had a great time, and he spontaneously told me his favorite part of his day was meeting his teacher in person. Isn't that the best, right? Kids in hybrid learning will go to school for a couple hours a day. Some families say it's pretty tough to manage, though, schedule-wise, dropping off and picking up, so they're keeping their kids in online-only learning. Parents do have the choice. District leaders say about two-thirds of elementary school families are going, though, with the hybrid option. And to mark the occasion, students at Scott Elementary School in Northeast Portland got a visit from Governor Kate Brown. She stressed the importance of giving families the final say in whether their student goes back to class. For some families coming back, having students come back into the classroom simply doesn't work. Um, and so I wanted to make sure that families across the state of Oregon, and it's pretty uh, diverse geographically and otherwise, that families had a choice about what was best for their particular family. The governor also visited a school in Woodburn. According to state officials, as of last week, more than 220,000 Oregon students were getting some level of in-person learning. Well, we have had some really great weather here the past couple of days, and that worked out perfectly for a group that was out cleaning up beaches on Thursday. Now, they weren't at the Oregon coast. These people were actually in downtown Portland, cleaning up beaches along the Willamette River. We saw volunteers from several local community groups there picking up literally tons of trash yesterday. They did want to get the work done now while the water level is still low because we're going to see the annual spring off or spring runoff that is here pretty soon. Once the Willamette does rise, any of that trash that's still on the banks can wind up in the water. Right now we're kind of taking the first step to clear off some debris. We're working around uh, homeless camps and communicating with them to allow them to get rid of things. That's just trash that's accumulated. That right there was Willie Levinson. He's the ringleader behind the nonprofit called Human Access Project. Willie and company plan to clean up Portland's beaches once a week, starting now through the summer. Rod, we had that uh, great spring weather we talked about, especially Wednesday when we hit 71 degrees. Yeah. Uh, I imagine we're going to hit 80 this weekend, right? Oh, of course. Uh, you know, um, yesterday it was 68, warmer than what I thought it would be. Today, I think... Uh, no warmer than 65 or so, and, and maybe we don't even make that, but still very, very pleasant for this time of the year. There's cool weather sitting out in the Pacific, and remember yesterday, it would be perfectly clear, then we have a little bit of cloudiness come through, then it would be perfectly clear again. I think these bands of clouds continue to feed in and give us a similar sky condition today. Quite sunny at times, more partly cloudy or filtered sun. Uh, at other times, and we don't have any rain in the forecast till we get to Sunday. Here's Futurecast Sunday morning at 5 a.m. showing the first wave of showers up in Astoria, maybe some traces of rain inland. Showers will be picking up during the day when the forecast model shows we get as much as three tenths of an inch of total rain 
developing during the day Sunday through Sunday night into Monday morning. Here's a look at our current temperatures. A little bit cooler this morning. 36 in Salem, 43 Portland, 39 in Kelso. Still really pleasant overall. In fact, 47 with the west breeze out in the Dallas to about 12 miles per hour currently. Uh, forecast numbers. Forecast models go low 60s today with Northwest breezes on the light side, 5 to 15 miles per hour at most. It shows Longview 60, Vancouver 63. Similar conditions tomorrow. Tomorrow might end up being more of a mostly cloudy filtered Sunday, 64. There's only 55 with some rain at times on Sunday. And then look at next week, which is Washington spring break, of course. Most days next week may fail to hit 60. The best week for spring break was this week. And sadly, most of our big schools uh, were not on spring break this week. <laughs> Oh, well. It always works out like that, right? Doesn't it? <laughs> All right, Rod, thank you. Well, there's plenty of Oregon pride still left in the NCAA tournament. Coming up next, the local athletes starring in the final stretch of March Madness. Plus, there's a new baseball league headed to Kaiser, and tryouts are open. We reached out to the league CEO for the deets.